Hello everyone, welcome to Small Giant Online Music Lessons. My name is Shane, and in this episode we'll be talking about the Circle of Fifths, also known as the Cycle of Fifths. The Circle of Fifths is a tool that many musicians around the world use to remember the key signatures that belongs to certain keys. What are keys and key signatures, you may ask? Keys are categorized into two different groups, namely the majors and the minors. Our focus will be on the major keys today and their key signature. Do keep a lookout for our episode on minor keys if you'd like to know more about key signatures of the minor keys. Major keys. Major keys are known to sound happy and bright. There are 12 different notes in music and each has their respective major key. They sound different and unique. It's like 12 different people with different character and personalities. The character of each major key is defined by something called key signature, the combinations of sharps or flats. The circle of fifths helps us musicians to remember the various combinations for the different major keys. Let's begin. Firstly, we are going to need a circle, as some of you might have already guessed. We are going to split the circle into 12 equal parts. If we follow the method of halving the circle each time, we'll end up with 2, 4, 8, 16 equal parts, not quite the 12 pieces that we are looking for. Is there something around us that has a circle divided into 12 equal pieces? Well, I'm going with a clock or a watch face. Let's start by marking the quarters 12, 3, 6 and 9 o'clock. Next, we will divide each quarter into 3 by marking 1, 2, 4, 5, 7, 8, 10 and 11 o'clock. Now that we have our circle all sorted, we can finally start talking about music. Yeet! Just for old time's sake, let's list out the different notes we have in music, starting with A, B, C, D, E, F, N, G. After G, we go back to A, and if it helps you, write out another repetition of the seven different notes. There's going to be quite a bit of counting. Here are some rules for the circle of fifths. First, the magic number is five. We will only need to add five notes or go back five notes in the course of the circle of fifths. Using the normal associations of left and right, we will add five notes when we are moving towards the right and go back five notes when we are going towards the left. Second, drawing a dotted line down the middle of the circle, the right semicircle, belongs to the major keys with sharps and the left semicircle belongs to the major keys with flats. And last but not least, the inner circle is used for the keys and the outer circle is used for the key signature. Enough rules, let's get circling. In music, we always try to be different. Instead of starting on an A, we usually find ourselves starting on C and that is where we are going to start. On the 12 o'clock mark, write a letter C on the inner circle, C major. It is a neutral key and the purest key of them all, with no sharps and no flats. Here comes the counting. We will first move in a clockwise direction towards the right of the circle and adding five notes to C. By doing this, we'll find the next major key, C, D, E, F, and G. The next major key is therefore G major on the one o'clock mark. We keep doing the same to find the next major key. Following G is D to A to E, B, and finally F. We are going to leave F alone for now. It's going to change at some point of time. Now let's start talking about the sharps as key signatures to these keys that we just found. G major has one sharp and it is F sharp. Now let's write F sharp on the outer circle on the one o'clock mark. Now G major has a key signature of F sharp. Following G major is D major. It has two sharps. D major starts with F sharp and to find the second sharp, we add five notes to F. F, G, A, B, C. That's C sharp. Therefore, D major has two sharps, F sharp and C sharp. Next, we have A major. 
we do the same thing and add five notes to C sharp to get the third sharp. That makes A major different from D major. The key signature of A major is now F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. On the four o'clock mark, we have E major. E major has four sharps, and the fourth sharp is found through yet again the same method, adding five notes. Now let's add five notes to G, G, A, B, C, D, giving us a brand new sharp of D sharp. So in E major, we've got F, C, G, D sharp. Following which, B major has five sharps. You must kind of get the pattern right now. Um, we're going to add five notes. And we add five notes to D sharp, and we have an A sharp. The key signature of B major is therefore F, C, G, D, A sharp. Down to the last one. Hang in there. Did you notice that there is an F sharp in all five major keys that we have just learnt? Therefore, this F on the six o'clock mark will be an F sharp instead of an ordinary F. And now, the key signature for F sharp major is F, C, G, D, A, and E sharp. We have completed our first half of the circle. Let's move on into our second half. As we move in an anti-clockwise direction, towards the left of the circle, we are going to count five notes again, but this time backwards. It only gets easier, doesn't it? Now from C, we are going to count five notes backwards to find out our first major flat key. It lies on the 11 o'clock mark. C, B, A, G, F. It's F major. The key signature for F major is B flat. On the 11 o'clock mark, let's write F on the inner circle and B flat on the outer circle. Instead of counting backwards and hurting your brain to find the next major flat key, we can simply bring B flat into the circle on the 10 o'clock mark because five notes back from F is actually B. F, E, D, C, B. Now we are in B flat major on the 10 o'clock mark. Let's find out the key signature for B flat major. In B flat major, we have two flats. And to find the second flat, we will count five notes backwards. B, A, G, F, E, E flat. So the key signature for B flat major is B flat and E flat. We do the same thing and bring the last flat into the circle and we have our next major key, E flat major. E flat major has three flats. And to find our third flat, we will count five steps backwards from E flat to find the next flat. E, D, C, B, A, A flat. The key signature for E flat major is therefore B flat, E flat, and A flat. Keeping the patterns that we have just established, the next major key is of course A flat major. And there are four flats in the key signature. B flat, E flat, A flat, and D flat. Bringing D flat into the circle again, D flat major has a key signature of B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, and G flat. Finally, bringing G flat into the circle. Oh wait, G flat is on the same mark as F sharp. That's interesting, but it's right. F sharp and G flat are enharmonic of one another, which also means they are the same note. Our circle is complete. I am sure we are all eager to determine the key signature of G flat major. So here it goes. The key signature of G flat major is B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, and C flat. What you might realize is that the key signature of G flat major and F sharp major are also enharmonic of one another which also means they are the same, but they're just called a different name. Now, catch us on our next episode where we will talk about the concept and idea of enharmonics and why do composers use enharmonic notes. So here it is, your circle is complete. You have all the key signatures 
of your major keys under your fingers. I hope you enjoyed this episode and do remember to leave us a comment, like this video and subscribe to our channel. It's going to be lit!